I'm about to do your Sagittarius tarot reading for the end of January 2022. And in this Sagittarius love reading, we're going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. Sagittarius, what is going on with you? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Sagittarius love reading. Now, if this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you always get notified anytime I post a new Sagittarius tarot reading for you. Now, let's get on with this Sagittarius love reading today because today we are going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. And I'm going to do that by getting one card to represent the mutual point of interest between the two of you. Then I'm going to get three cards for you, Sagittarius, three cards for your person, and then I'm going to clarify everything with the second deck, just to make sure we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection of yours. Now, I do want to say that this is not a personal reading. This is a general reading, which means I'm not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person the same way I would if I were doing a personal reading for you. If a personal reading with me is something that you'd like to do, you can find all the information about my personal readings in the description right below this video, as well as in the first pinned comment below this video. But this is a general reading, which means I'm tapping into the collective energy of a large group of Sagittarius people that I'm responsible for getting messages for. And that really means there's no possible way this reading is going to resonate with literally every single Sagittarius person on the entire planet all at the same time, because not every Sagittarius person is going through the same set of energies or the same set of circumstances all at the same time. It's also important to keep in mind in general readings like this, energies can and do get flipped around backwards from time to time, especially for cross watchers. So if you're not a Sagittarius and you're just watching this Sagittarius tarot reading, because you're interested in a Sagittarius and you want to find out what's going on between the two of you, I'm totally fine with that. Just keep in mind, though, that especially for cross watchers, energies are very prone to get flipped around backwards. So just take it as it resonates. Now, regardless of how this reading resonates for you, you should still probably check the videos for your moon sign, your rising sign, and your Venus sign, just because they can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And you can find the links to those videos information about my personal readings, the different tarot decks that I'm using in this reading, crystals, all kinds of fun, helpful information is in the description right under this video. But enough yakking. I know it has been a long time since I did a Sagittarius reading for you. Back in November, I did, I think, 36 readings for the channel. I did like 46 personal readings. Then I took a trip to Texas, so I was gone for a little bit. When I got back, I had to finish up a whole bunch of personal readings all the way through December and at the beginning of January, and I'm just now finally caught up to the point that I can get back to doing these free readings here on YouTube. So that is where I've been, but let's quit talking and let's get on with this Sagittarius love reading. What is the mutual point of interest between Sagittarius and their romantic person of interest here at the very end of January 2022? Okay. I just had the Five of Wands flip over and show itself to me and then go back in the deck right before that came out. What's going on with Sagittarius as it relates to their romantic person of interest and the connection between them here at the end of January 2022? <clears throat> well, let's get three cards for your person, Saggy. What's going on with Sagittarius' romantic person of interest as it relates to Sagittarius? And the connection between them here at the very end, January 2022. Ain't that something? Said that five of wands showed itself to me and went back in. And there it is in your person's energy. On the bottom of the deck, <clears throat> the overall energy of this reading is the world. Now this is the final card of the Major Arcana. The world represents completions of cycles. And at the same time, the beginning of the next cycle. So we've got something coming to an end and something new beginning. The ending of one cycle, the beginning of a beautiful new cycle here. In terms of zodiac signs, this would represent the four fixed signs of the zodiac. Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio. Right under the world, we have the Eight of Wands. This is Sagittarius energy. This is... The second fastest energy in the deck, this is rapid forward movement, 
rapid forward progress on something. This can be rapid back and forth passionate communication between the two of you. This can also represent a whole lot of energy coming at you all at one time, kind of like trying to take a drink out of a fire hose. It can be a little bit overwhelming here. And right under that, we have judgment. This is about some final decision being made, as in passing your own final verdict and judgment on something. This can also be an energy of reconciliation, as in resurrection, bringing something back to life, bringing it back from the dead, and transforming it in a way that it's never going to be the same again. So we've got the ending of something and the beginning of something new here going on. I'm wondering if you guys haven't been talking for a while, like there's been some problem between the two of you, and now communication is picking back up, and we're coming to some sort of a decision here. That's what it's looking like. Yeah, it looks like we had a break. The Four of Swords is taking a pause, taking a rest, taking a break. It's about going internal to heal something, or going internal to do some thinking about something, like trying to figure out how to move forward from here. This is Libra energy, by the way. So it's looking like the, whatever cycle was going on between the two of you guys looked like you were apart and not talking, and now that cycle has come to an end. It looks like communication is picking up or progress is being made here in terms of a decision after there's been a break and some thinking about that. At least that's what it looks like overall. We'll come back to that more as we move along. This shared energy is energy that is affecting both of you in some way. It may not be affecting you both exactly the same way, but this is definitely mutual energy that's affecting you both, and that mutual point of interest is the star. This is Aquarius energy. This is a card of wish fulfillment. It's a card of healing. It's also a card of hope. It's card 17 of the Major Arcana. Card 16, the one right before this in the sequence, is the Tower. So you don't ever make it to the Star energy without going through a Tower of some kind first. Something came apart, something came all crashing down. This is the guiding light from the universe that shows up to light your way after a Tower moment so that you can see your way moving forward from here. It's where hope comes from. It's where healing comes from. So it looks like we're trying to heal something, or at the very least... We have the hope that something can be healed, that some cycle can be put to an end, and things can start up again. So tell me more about the star. Why is that here as the mutual point of interest between Sagittarius and the romantic person of interest? This one is screaming at me too. Oh, we got two here, so we're taking them both. I see, I see. On the bottom of the deck, you just can't make this shit up. We have the star. Again, Aquarius energy. This is the card that I'm clarifying. Anytime I'm clarifying a card and I get that same card in the clarifiers that the universe going, dude, I done told you, there's something being healed here. Or at the very least, there's the hope that something can be healed between the two of you here. Right under that is strength. This is Leo, major arcana energy. This is... Some difficult situation that you guys have been through here, and it's required a lot of internal strength on both of your parts to even make it through this. This is saying that you both have the internal strength to make it through this. You've just had to dig down deep and tap into that in order to do this. This is also sometimes an energy of someone who's trying to rein themselves in, like trying to tame that beast inside yourself, trying to rein yourself in, hold yourself back not rush forward too quickly and make some kind of a mistake that'll make things worse. <sighs> yeah. Right under that we have the Nine of Pentacles, Virgo energy. This is a singles energy. This is with you, without you, in spite of you. I'm single, I'm abundant, I'm prosperous in my own right. I'm self-sufficient. I don't need someone to physically or financially take care of me. I can do all that physical reality stuff on my own. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that you guys both want to be single it just means that being single was a very difficult thing for you guys here. And I think that's what we're trying to heal. We're, we're at least having the hope that this connection can be healed and put back together after something happened to tear you guys apart and make you single. Oh, sheesh. Under that is the Seven of Swords. This is Aquarius energy. I'm seeing a lot of Aquarius so far here. <sighs> Quite a bit of Leo is out here. You could be dealing with an Aquarius, with a Leo, with a fixed sign. 
Uh, a fire sign. You could actually be dealing with any sign. This is a general reading. I'm not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person, so it's going to be really difficult for me to nail down for you exactly who you're dealing with because I'm reading for thousands of Sagittarius people right now. So I'm just going to call out all the signs as they stick out to me, that way in case they mean anything to you. But this Seven of Swords is Aquarius energy. This is usually not a great energy. This is usually lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind backs, deceptive behavior, overall an energy of trying to get away with something. That could be, that could be what caused this whole difficult situation, this split, this whatever has put you guys into being single. Now, this is not always lying and cheating and stealing and sneaking around behind your back. Sometimes this is an energy of self-preservation, as in not wanting to be hurt. The guy in the card is stealing these swords because he doesn't want to be hurt by those swords. He doesn't want those swords used against him, so he's stealing them to make sure that they can't be used against him and he can't be hurt. Sometimes the meaning for this card is leaving something behind. He can only carry five of those seven swords, and he's got to leave the other two swords behind. So, either we went through some difficult situation that landed you single because somebody didn't want to be hurt, or somebody was trying to leave something behind, or there was some sneaky, deceptive, dodgy bullshit going on that got found out. I think that's probably what happened because the next card down is the Six of Wands, Leo Energy. This is a card of recognition, as in recognizing something. So it's probable that somebody was doing some sneaky stuff behind your back and that got found out, that got recognized, and that brought everything apart. And now we're at the spot where this has been difficult being apart and we're having the hope that the cycle of being apart can end and a new cycle can begin where things get healed and put back together between the two of you and progress can happen and this can be resurrected after this break and this time of figuring things out yeah we've got the eight of cups right underneath that this is pisces energy of detachment like emotional detachment physical detachment physically walking away going off in search of the ninth and the tenth cup because these eight cups just aren't cutting it for you not making you quite happy enough now to clarify the star, normally I get three cards, but I got five. These two came out kind of like they were sticking out of the deck, just screaming at me. I thought it was only one card, but it was two. We got the Six of Swords, the Page of Swords, then we got the Queen of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, and the Knight of Cups. The Six of Swords is Aquarius energy again, so I've seen quite a bit of Aquarius out here. This is moving forward into calmer waters. This is about leaving the rough, choppy waters of the past behind you. Leaving that in the past. This is like at its core, this card's about moving away from some mentally or psychologically painful situation. Leaving that behind, moving forward, going forward toward what it is that you actually want. But the woman with the sword stuck in the front of the boat here represent that even though that's what you guys are trying to do right now, you're doing that carrying some burdens or even some lessons from the past along the way with you. Next we have the Page of Swords. This is sometimes news, messages, communication, sometimes communications about the truth or speaking the truth on something. Sometimes this is an energy of someone who's trying to figure something out, like doing their due diligence, trying to figure out something, possibly an energy of spying on someone, keeping tabs on someone, Sometimes this can represent a third-party energy that saw something and then came back and reported it to you. I've got this Seven of Swords down here and then some recognition right underneath that. Oh, and look, right below that is the world again, which is the overall energy of the reading. The ending of a cycle, the beginning of a new cycle. This could possibly be that someone saw what was going on in terms of this sneaky behavior and they brought that to your attention. There was a recognition about that that ended things between the two of you there for a minute. This could just be an energy of trying to figure out how to move forward from here. How do we leave this in the past, get by that, and then move forward toward what it is that we actually want? Now, right in the center of this, the clarifiers, is the Queen of Cups. This is Capricorn energy. Now, this is an earth sign, feminine energy. You're a fire sign, so I'm not sure that this is your energy here. This could be 
someone else that was involved. <sighs> Could be someone else that was involved and she's in the center of this need to heal everything. <sighs> now, this, this is also an energy of like, it's a very grounded, stable, abundant, nurturing, prosperous energy. This is who you would build the home life and the family life around. The King of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles work together as equals to build the Ten of Pentacles, that maximum stability and abundance that we all want, that happy home life that we all want, the combining together of two people and two families and all their assets and resources to make a happy, stable family. She's the centerpiece of all of that, and she's in the center of the energy here, but I don't feel like that is your energy as much as I'm feeling like this is someone else. could possibly be that there was a third party involved here there was some sneaking going on and it could have been with the capricorn a taurus a virgo or someone who is like a mother figure or you know is the center of her own home family life but the very next card we have is sagittarius energy of the nine of wands this is a card of being walled off and defensive about something now it's also a card of healing we're clarifying the star with the star on the bottom of the deck, both cards of healing. This is another card of healing. This is the wounded warrior, and he's been hurt, hence this wall that he's built around himself. That wall has been built as a way to protect him so that he doesn't get hurt again, so that he doesn't continue to get hurt. That way he can get his energy right to move forward and make the next step in his journey, so he can move forward and go towards what he wants. This can also sometimes represent a wall or an obstacle in between the two of you especially because it's the shared energy it's also like it's almost like we've got someone seeing something related to this feminine earth sign energy and then that becoming the wall there was some pain involved around that some walls and defenses went up to not be hurt about that and it's almost like she has created some sort of a wall between the two of you and right after the wall if we can get past the wall, we've got the Knight of Cups. Now, Knights are action takers, and Cups are about love and emotions. So this is actions toward love and emotions. This is romantic offers, romantic gestures, expressing of feelings. This is also moving forward in a love connection here. Take advancing the love connection, moving it forward. And at least it's looking like we both have the hope that that can happen, that this can be healed that we can leave the past in the past and not keep making her the center of attention. Figure out a way to get past that wall so that things can move forward. That's what it's looking like so far. At least that's the mutual energy between the two of you here at the end of September 2021, Sagittarius. Your energy in this connection is the Three of Wands, the Three of Coins, and the High Priestess very weird i'm seeing two threes i have this strong feeling over here even though i didn't really have anything to support it other than this little seven of swords and some recognition related to that there's clearly been a tower moment between the two of you or i wouldn't have the star out here once let alone twice I'm feeling strongly like this is a third party, and now I've got the first two cards in your energy are both threes. This three of wands is Aries energy. It's an energy of waiting. This is about being at the beginning stages of manifesting something that you want. Like in the two of wands, the card right before this, you're at a fork in the road, like a crossroads in your life, some kind of a decision point about which path leads you to the world you actually want and which path gets left behind. In the three of wands, that decision has already been made. That path has already been chosen and you're actively taking steps and actions down that new path that you've chosen toward what it is that you want. You're at the beginning stages of manifesting what you want and you have this positive expectancy that the thing you want is actually going to materialize for you. It just hasn't happened yet. So this is an energy of waiting on that to happen with a positive expectancy that it will. So tell me about the Three of Wands. Why is that here for Sagittarius January 2022, please? Why is the Three of Wands here? Okay, got one flip over. Ah, on 
the bottom of the deck, we have the King of Pentacles. Now I'm not 100% sure about this Queen of Pentacles. I'm not sure if this is a third party or if this is representing a piece of your energy or if it's both at the same time. It could be either of those. It could be both of those at the same time. But I've got the King of Pentacles on the bottom. This is Virgo energy. Sometimes I guess this could be Taurus energy. This is... This is who works together with the Queen of Pentacles to build the Ten of Pentacles. Like I already said, I mean, this is counterparts. This is like a power couple. These are two cards that are supposed to be together, which usually for me represents two people who are probably supposed to be together. This has a lot to do with the stability of the home life, stability in the, the physical 3D reality, like the money, the assets, the tangible material possessions. This could be your person, and you could be waiting on them for something. I've got the Six of Cups right underneath that. Scorpio energy. This is a card of the past. It's thinking about the past, reminiscing about the past, thinking about the good old days and the way things used to be. This can represent someone from the past making a comeback. At the very least, this is a very deep emotional connection between the two of you. And you're doing a lot of thinking about the past while you're waiting on something related to the stability of the connection or related to your person here. Ace of Swords, the Sword of Victory, the Sword of Truth, the Sword of Clarity. It's the sword you would use to make a decision with. Like the word decision, like the Latin word that word comes from, literally means to cut off, as in to cut off the other options and be left with only one option. That's how you make an actual decision. This is the sword also that can be used to sever a connection, to cut someone out of your life that's not in your best interest anymore. It can even be the sword you would use to sever something that's not in balance, so balance can be restored. And I've got you right under that. Queen of Wands. It's about knowing what you want being very determined to get exactly what you want, not really accepting excuses, like going after it and getting it. Hmm. But there's some sort of an internal conflict right under that Leo energy of the Five of Wands. Fives are conflict. Wands are about passion, desire. So this is a conflict in the desires, an internal conflict where you're, a piece of you wants this one thing and another piece of you wants the, pretty much the opposite of that. And you're having this internal battle of tug of war inside your desires, pulling yourself in multiple directions at the same time. Probably based on thinking about the past and trying to decide what it is that you want. It's almost feeling like at times you want to repair this connection. You want this healed and brought back together so that things can move forward. But then at times you're thinking about the past and thinking about either what you saw or what was reported back to you, what you recognized, and at times you're thinking about leaving the wall up and just moving on with this. I think you probably go back and forth about that and aren't 100% sure from one day to the next what you want. And in the meantime, you're waiting on something to happen. It looks like you're waiting on the connection to heal, though. To clarify the Three of Wands, I have the Four of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, and Justice. Now, the Four of Pentacles is Capricorn energy. This is an energy of holding on tightly to something and not wanting to let go of it. Then I've got the Wheel of Fortune. This is divine timing. Sometimes this is the Wheel of Fate or the Wheel of Destiny, so this can represent a fated event. This can also represent a change in the luck and fortune of this connection. If things have been going bad, this can be the wheel spinning the other way, and now things suddenly go good. This cycle of things going bad comes to an end, and a beautiful new cycle of something positive happening, this healing, can begin. A lot of times for me, what this represents is the universe turning that wheel in the background, trying to make sure things line up the way they're supposed to, so that what's supposed to happen actually does happen. And that's usually what this means. Like, what's supposed to happen is going to happen, regardless of what you do. 
I feel like what you're doing is waiting and holding on, waiting for this wheel to spin, waiting for what's supposed to happen to actually happen. I think what for in terms of you, what you believe deep down is supposed to happen is that this gets healed and you have the hope that it will. The final card to clarify the three of wands is justice. This is Libra energy. This is the most powerful card of balance in the deck. It's about doing the right thing, the fair thing, the just thing. The sword in that card is that ace of swords we saw a minute ago. And in this card, it's used to sever things that aren't in balance. So balance can be restored and the right, fair, just thing can happen. Like what's supposed to happen can actually happen. I've got two cards in a row of what's supposed to happen happening. And you're waiting on what's supposed to happen. And you don't really want to let go of this connection. Next card in your energy, Sagittarius, is the three of coins. Again, this is Capricorn energy. This is an energy of usually teamwork and collaboration and working together as equals to build the Ten of Pentacles. Again, I kind of alluded to that already when we saw both of the counterparts out here of the Pentacles suit. Normally, in a standard tarot deck, there would be three people on this card working together as equals to build something. But in this particular deck, there's only one person on the card. So this is feeling like, at the current moment, you're still single and trying to work towards something here, but you're doing it by yourself when you probably used to be together doing that. Tell me about this Three of Coins, please. Why is the Three of Coins here? I'm not taking all of those. I'll take the ones that came face up. If any of these are supposed to come out, they'll come back out. One more for this Three of Coins, please. Okay, we'll take more than one. Thank you. I don't get to pick it. I just, I shuffle and then I do what I'm told. Oh, backwards. Thank you. Bottom of the deck, Six of Pentacles. This is Taurus energy. Um, now I'm seeing a lot of Earth energy out here. This is a card of balance as well. This is generosity, reciprocity. It's, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. This is a card of like balance and equal give and take. King of Swords right under that. This is also sometimes an energy of the merchant giving to two, as in there's more than one other person. There's another person involved here. Somebody in the connection has someone on the side. It could be that. It could be that's why we're in this you working by yourself state as opposed to you guys working together feels like that this was a balanced connection at some point and you're hoping to balance it back out it might be a case where you are working by yourself trying to balance this back out or you're working on building the foundation to something by yourself until this gets balanced out having the hope that it will that king of swords right under that this is either gemini or aquarius energy this is a decision maker. This is someone who's very smart, very logical, very analytical, rational, usually someone who's very fair. It's also someone though who is emotionally disconnected. When he makes his decisions, he's not consulting his emotions when he does that. He's only looking at what he can see right in front of him. Like what are what's the truth and the facts of the matter? He doesn't care about the emotions or the story behind what's going on. Just the truth and the facts. And he's going to use that to make the best, most logical, most rational decision available for everyone involved. So I don't know if this is you trying to be logical or if you're trying to balance it out with someone who seems disconnected from you. Might seem a little bit cold and standoffish. Or if you're trying to like keep your eyes open and be logical yourself about the king of pentacles we saw that a second ago it felt like it was representing your person here this could be that your person is struggling to balance between these two different aspects of himself this grounded stable person versus this person who's emotionally disconnected and it could be you're trying to balance things out in terms of like you're thinking a lot about the past here 
and you're currently working by yourself, this would be somebody who's like, your emotions are telling you one thing because you're thinking about the past a lot and you're still feeling the connection. But the fact that, that you're here by yourself working on things, the fact that you're still waiting for something to get balanced out so that what's supposed to happen can happen. You could be trying to logically talk yourself out of anything with this person. Not exactly sure this is a general reading. You're going to have to take that however it resonates for you. But to clarify this Three of Pentacles, I got two extra cards. I got the Magician, the Five of Swords, the King of Wands, Death, and Judgment. Magician is the, mas the Mac Daddy Master Manifester of the Tarot deck. He's got all four aces on the table in front of him. It's the aces are the ones, so he's got all four ones. 11, 11, which is the number of manifestation. This is telling me that you have all the tools, abilities, resources, everything you need to manifest whatever it is your will desires, like to create from nothing whatever it is that you want, to shape the world around you, to be in alignment with what your will desires. And you're actively manifesting something right now. Like I said, you're at the beginning stages of it, taking all the actions, going down the path, waiting for it to materialize and this is another element of you manifesting something being at the beginning stages of creating something but it looks like you're doing it by yourself and i think the reason for that is this five of swords aquarius energy of a painful situation fives are conflict so this can be an argument like bitter words being spoken like a conflict in communication words being used like weapons or using your tongue like a sword to cut each other. This is usually a big fight that takes place. Really, this is a very mentally and psychologically painful situation here. I kind of figured that was going on because not only does the star indicate that there was a tower, even though there's no tower out here, the six of swords indicates that we're now at the next step past the five of swords, moving away from that mentally and psychologically painful situation. So, it's like you're trying to manifest balancing this back out, and then at some point you start like trying to be logical, and like common sense is telling you to do the opposite of try to heal this connection based on the pain that happened here. But then we've got this King of Wands. So either this is representing a third aspect of your person, now this is Sagittarius energy, sometimes Leo energy, Again, this is someone who knows exactly what they want. They have this bold, passionate, fiery determination to go get exactly what they want. They don't take no for an answer. They don't accept excuses. They don't accept defeat. They don't let roadblocks and obstacles get in their way and stop them. This is the type of person who will move mountains to get what they want. This is also, if this is representing your person, it's the king of the wand suit. And the wand is the phallic symbol of the tarot deck. So it can represent the male phallus and using it to be intimate. This is not just someone who has a lot of passion and desire. It's someone who's driven by passion, driven by desire, like even sexual desires. So that could be what caused the painful situation here. That could be what got in the way, created the wall, tore this apart to where now it needs to be healed. I'm thinking that might be it because look, we're going from the painful situation to the King of Wands to death. And he is right in the center of the painful situation that killed something. This is Scorpio energy of an ending. This is something dying so that it can be reborn again in a new, more beautiful way. This is a, a painful transformation process that you've been going through here, a painful death and hopefully a rebirth because we have judgment next. This is about passing your own final verdict and judgment on a situation. This is either calling it dead and over with, or this is about resurrecting it and bringing it back from the dead, bringing it back to life, healing it, and transforming it in a way that it's not going to be the same again. It's feeling almost like you're internally conflicted about that because one minute you're trying to you're waiting on this and you don't want to let go of it and you want the you want what's supposed to happen to happen and this to get balanced out and everything to be right and just and fair. 
And then in other minutes, you're still thinking about the painful situation here. You still have your wall up. Still trying to balance it out. It's like you're back and forth about it. Final card in your energy for January 2022, Saji, is the High Priestess. Card two of the Major Arcana. Twos represent decisions. I've seen judgment twice, a final decision. I've seen the chief decision maker of the deck here in the King of Swords. I've seen the Ace of Swords, the sword you would use to decide something with. Something hanging in the balance here. Sword in the center of that card. I'm feeling decision all over the place here. And almost at times you're, you're going back and forth about what your decision is. The High Priestess is card two of the Major Arcana, so she rules over all the twos of the four suits of the deck. She rules over all the decisions. She represents the unconscious mind. She represents the intuition. She actually sits in front of the veil of consciousness, so she's got access to all the information that you and I as humans don't have access to. She can literally see everything. She knows everything. The problem with her is she doesn't always tell us everything. Sometimes there's stuff that we're just not meant to know as humans. Sometimes there's stuff that we don't need to know until it's time for us to know. At which point she clues us in through our intuition, through our gut feelings, through signs, and synchronicities, and repeating numbers, and dreams with messages. This is your unconscious mind or your intuition speaking to you, receiving divine guidance here. That can be another meaning to the star card. Got two cards speaking of divine guidance here. This could also be a situation where you're trying to balance between two things. Your intuition is telling you one thing. Your gut, your emotions are telling you one thing. Your unconscious mind is telling you one thing. And then your conscious, logical, rational thinking mind is telling you something entirely different. And you're conflicted and going back and forth about it. Now also in a love reading, she can indicate that the connection between the two of you, at least from your point of view, is deeper than just something physical. It's deeper than just something emotional. It could be bordering on a spiritual connection here. So tell me about this high priestess. Why is that here for Sagittarius at the end? January 2022, please. Shh. Getting extra cards for you all over the place. Bottom of the deck. Ace of Pentacles. This is an opportunity presenting itself to you. A practical, tangible opportunity being handed to you by the universe. This is the seed that has the potential to grow into the Ten of Pentacles that we all want. That stability, abundance, prosperity, the combining together of two people and two families and all the assets and resources to build the happy, stable home life. This is the seed with the potential to grow into all that. It's not that in and of itself, it just has the potential to get there. It's like all aces, you have to grab these and do something with them or they just represent empty potential. This is gonna take some work, it's gonna take some time, some effort, some energy, but if you put some energy into it, it's definitely an opportunity. So either your intuition is telling you that there is an opportunity here or you're feeling that there is an opportunity here. You're not happy right now, though. This Four of Cups is Cancer energy. It's an energy of emotional discontentment. Could be that you're not happy because you're not able to see the opportunity right now. It hasn't been presented to you just yet, but it's on its way. This is you not being happy with the Three Cups that you have and daydreaming about this other cup, this other thing that you believe is going to lead you to your happiness and fulfillment. A lot of times this card will represent that there is a love offer on the table between the two of you already. Like there's an opportunity for that and it just hasn't been accepted or rejected yet. It's just kind of been left hanging here in the air. This could also be you contemplating making a love offer, offering your cup of love to your person here and you haven't done so yet because you haven't had the opportunity to do so or because you're still kind of conflicted where your emotions are telling you one thing and your logical mind is telling you to do something different. I think you're looking for an opportunity for your happiness here. The Sun, Leo energy, happiest card in the deck. It's happiness, joy, abundance, bliss, harmony. 
You can't get a better card than that. But right now, you're not happy. You're emotionally discontent. And you keep thinking about this other thing that's leading you to your happiness. I'm wondering if you have your happiness tied to this other person. As in, like, if you've made it that I'll be happy when I have them back. I hope you're not doing that because that's not how it works. Your happiness comes from inside yourself, not from some other person. Which, it looks like you recognize this. I think it may have taken you a long time to recognize this, or progress on that was very slow. This Knight of Pentacles is the slowest knight in the deck. This is usually a frustrating energy of someone who wants something to happen faster than it's happening. It's happening too slow for their taste. He's also carrying this Ace of Pentacles, this opportunity. <sighs> to clarify the High Priestess, I got the Seven of Swords, the Page of Cups, the Nine of Cups, and the Devil. The Seven of Swords, we already saw that in the story on the bottom of the deck when I clarified the star. This is Aquarius energy. Usually lying, cheating, stealing, sneaking around behind somebody's back, doing some deceptive, dodgy bullshit, and trying to get away with it. Hmm. The very next card is the Page of Cups. This is... Pages are messengers, and cups are about love and emotions. So this is news and messages and communication about love and emotions. This can be the expressing of feelings... This can be making a, like a beginning stage love offer here. This can also represent an apology. Apology for the sneakiness that was going on. Next we have the Nine of Cups. This is Pisces energy. This is a singles energy. This is someone who is emotionally okay in and of themselves in other words they don't need some external person to get their happiness from because they realize their happiness comes from inside themselves they don't need some external person to get their sense of love or being worthy of love from because they love themselves and their love comes from inside themselves not from something outside of them this is a very good energy for you to be in most people's goal in love and emotions and relationships is the Ten of Cups. That, like that happy fairy tale love connection that we all want. But what most people don't realize is the Nine of Cups should actually be the goal. Because the only way to get to the Ten is you have to be in the Nine yourself. Your person also has to be in the Nine of Cups. You being in the Nine of Cups where you're okay with yourself and you don't need someone else is exactly how you attract the right person to you. When you need and you're projecting a lack of love into the universe and having all of that pinned on some external person and like when they show up, then I'll be happy and when they show up, then I'll feel loved and I'll be loved. That is projecting to the universe a lack of love and it reflects back to you a lack of love. So if you're not in the Nine of Cups, you're not going to attract someone to you. And even if you do, they're not going to be in the Nine of Cups themselves, which means their cups aren't full, and they're going to have to siphon your love and emotions off of you in order to fill their own cups, which is going to drain you. That's not a recipe for success in terms of love and emotions. So this is good that this is showing up in your energy. It's almost like you realized intuitively or somehow because of this sneakiness that you're okay with yourself, that you love yourself. But there is definitely an opportunity with this person here. I don't know if you're seeing the opportunity or not. I don't know if you're just feeling like there is an opportunity and you can't physically see it. But there is an opportunity here. The card that's kind of freaking me out, besides just this Seven of Swords, is the Devil. More Capricorn energy. This is usually a heavy toxic energy. It's usually addiction or obsession or a feeling of being trapped by something like feeling like you can't escape something sometimes this can be an element to your shadow as in like a piece of yourself that you don't like and you don't 
want other people to see or you don't want to see it yourself so you kind of like push it down into the shadows you repress it and pretend like it's not there but it is there and pretending like it's not there just creates a scenario where it's going to control an aspect of your life this could be a piece of your person's energy showing up if they have some sort of addiction that causes them to sneak around and lie and cheat and steal it could be a sexual addiction i do have the king of wands out here with this in the center of this all right between a painful situation and an ending to the connection it could be your person has some sort of a devil energy and you're waiting on the wheel to spin on that you're waiting on like the karmic hamster wheel to stop spinning so that things can get balanced out and what's supposed to happen can happen you're waiting on an apology to happen but if it doesn't you're still okay with yourself this devil could mean a whole lot of different things so you just got to take that however it resonates for your particular situation but that's your energy in this connection for the end of january 2022 sagittarius let's scoot this over get some more room take a look at your person's energy because in their energy we have the page of swords five of wands and the seven of wands page of swords we already see out here in the mutual energy between the two of you it's an energy of communication news and messages going back and forth the speaking of truth about something it can also represent like premature or immature communication like communication that wasn't thought out very well in advance kind of spoken before they thought and it caused some sort of a problem Again, this can also be an energy of someone who's trying to learn something, trying to figure something out. It can be an energy of spying or keeping tabs on someone. It can be a third party that saw something that your person did and that reported it back to you. It can be any of those things. So let's clarify this Page of Swords. Why is the Page of Swords here, please? bottom of the deck six of pentacles taurus energy again this is usually balance but this is feeling like the merchant giving to two i feel like they got found out having another person on the side besides you somebody saw that and reported it back to you yep somebody saw them having a new cup of love on the side Clarifying the Page of Swords, we got the Five of Cups, Knight of Wands, Nine of Swords. Five of Cups, Scorpio Energy. This is sadness and remorse about the past. It's about thinking about the past, being focused on the past, being focused on these three cups that have been spilled, all the love and emotions that have been spilled out, all the time, effort, and energy that's been spilled out and wasted. This is a card about where the focus is. Notice there are two upright full cups in the background. That's the two of cups, the love connection between the two of you. And their focus isn't on that. It's on the past. And what most people don't realize is what you focus on actually dictates to you what energies and what emotions you feel. So if someone's focused on the past... They feel the way they felt in the past. If they focus on something that they've lost, they feel the loss. If they focus on something that they believe is missing from their life, they feel that gap in their life. So this is a message for your person about controlling their focus. And where their focus is, is not necessarily where it should be. They're, they're feeling sadness and remorse probably about what they did. Feeling sadness and remorse because that was found out and reported back to you that ended a cycle and started a new cycle i think they're still trying to figure out how to get past all of this because that two of cups connection is still in the background here this mutual energy of the star is them having the hope that this can be healed trying to figure out how this can be healed how that cycle can be put to end and how we can start a new cycle of communicating and making progress and trying to resurrect this connection after we've had some sort of a break some sort of a detachment and walking away when things got hung up and no progress was happening and things were just stuck right there 
It's like they're trying to figure out how to get past all of this, how to move it forward, how to get past the walls that you've put up and how to advance this love connection. And they're having sadness and remorse about what happened. Next, to clarify that page of swords, we have the Knight of Wands. This is the second fastest knight in the deck. It's about rushing forward, taking rapid, passionate action towards something they have a lot of passion and desire for. This is also, though, referred to as the player of the tarot deck. It's someone who has shifting loyalties, who can't necessarily stay in one place for too long. Somebody who's wishy-washy and in and out and back and forth, and they'll come rushing in all passionately to get what they want, and then they rush out all passionately somewhere else and get what they want, and they keep trying to come back and forth. Being a player, merchant giving to two, I think they got caught being a player. Seven of Swords was out here in the bottom of the deck story when I clarified the star. It's out here in your energy here, clarifying the High Priestess. I'm pretty sure they had some pieces of their shadow that they didn't deal with and had some sort of a problem where they were running around trying to do some stuff they shouldn't have been doing and got caught. Now they're worried about it. Nine of Swords is Gemini energy. This is mental anguish. This is thinking about something over and over and over again with all this fear and worry and anxiety behind the thinking. Thinking about it so much, with so much fear and worry and anxiety behind their thinking that they're physically stressing themselves out. This is a card of mental anguish, a card of sleepless nights, a card of nightmares. Basically not being able to shut their mind off think they're trying to figure out how to get past what happened between the two of you. How do we leave that painful situation they caused in the past and move forward? Bottom or the next card in their energy is the five of wands. Leo energy. Fives are conflict. Wands are passion and desire. So this is a conflict in their desires, an internal conflict. A piece of them wants one thing, a piece of them wants something else. And they can't decide between, like it goes back and forth. They're playing tug of war in their desires here. Tell me about this five of wands. Why is that here for Sagittarius' says, romantic person of interest, please? One flipped over here. Yep. All three major arcanas, too. Bottom of the deck, ace of pentacles. We saw that when I clarified the high priestess for you. Practical, tangible opportunity presenting itself. The seed with the potential to turn into the Ten of Pentacles, it just has to be grabbed and something done with it. It's going to take work, time, effort, and energy. And right under that, we have the Knight of Pentacles. Slowest moving knight in the deck. One foot in front of the other, slow, methodical, not being in a hurry, not being in a rush. Taking things nice and slow. Or the Queen of Cups. This is telling me they still have a lot of love and emotions for you. They still want to give their love and emotions to you. I think they have an opportunity to do something here. To advance toward you. To try and heal this. To try and get past your wall. They're just internally conflicted about this here. The Knight of Pentacles is sometimes an energy of someone who knows what they're supposed to do and just hasn't actually done it yet. Yeah, right under the Queen of Cups here, I've got the Hierophant Taurus energy of commitment, taking things to the next level from wherever they are. Between the two of you, your person is internally conflicted about what to do here. To clarify that, I got the Tower the lovers, and strength. Like I said, you don't make it to the star without going through the tower first. I've seen the star twice already at the very beginning, so I knew there had been a tower. Here it is. This is when everything came crumbling down. It all came crashing and burning. Very abrupt change to the situation. Probably when they got found out being a player, that was reported back to you, and then all hell broke loose. They're internally conflicted because the tower happened. Probably internally conflicted about whether they can have an opportunity to heal this with you or not. Because your walls are up. 
the, the way the guy looks in this card here with the Knight of Pentacles, he looks very, like, timid. Like, I don't know if I should be coming toward you with this or not, but he's carrying this. Next, we have the Lovers, Gemini Energy. This is a very powerful love connection. Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, Divine Counterparts. These are two people who were probably supposed to be together. At least in terms of how your person's viewing it here. I think they want an opportunity to fix this with you. But because the tower happened, they're worried here. They're conflicted. Like, will they take me back? Won't they take me back? Did I break everything beyond repair? Or do we still have this connection here? The connection's still there, for sure. It's just where their focus is is not in the right spot. And that's because of this strength card. They're going through a very difficult situation here. They're in mental anguish here. They're having all this sadness and remorse and probably regrets about what happened. It's taking a lot of internal strength for them to make it through this. This is also them trying to be patient, trying to rein themselves in, trying to not rush forward too quickly. Mm, they're feeling incredibly drained and tired. I keep wanting to yawn here. They're not wanting to rush forward too fast and make some kind of mistake. I think that's another piece of their internal conflict here. I've got the slowest moving knight in the deck and the second fastest moving knight in the deck. It's like they're wanting to come forward toward you quickly. But they're trying to hold themselves back and do it nice and slow so they don't screw anything up. They're not wanting to make a mistake and let the lion loose and cause a whole bunch of damage worse than it's already been damaged here. And in the center of all of this is their love for you. Final card in your person's energy for the end of January 2022, Sagi, is the Seven of Wands. More Leo energy. This is also a card of being walled off and defensive. But it's more an energy of defending their position on something. Defending their stance on something. Or being willing to fight for what it is that they believe in. Fight for what they desire. Sometimes this is an energy of someone who's defending themselves against accusations. Sometimes it's an energy of someone who's defending themselves from external forces, like what other people might say or what they think or how other people feel. You know, they're talking. Sometimes this is just they're willing to try to fight past your wall so that they could advance this love connection with you. Willing to fight for the connection. Tell me about the Seven of Wands. Why is that here? For Sagittarius' romantic person of interest. The end of January 2022. Why is that Seven of Wands here, please? Yeah. Bottom of the deck. Ace of Pentacles. There's that opportunity again. What's this the third time we've seen it on the bottom of the deck now? Some practical, tangible opportunity. They want to fight for an opportunity with you. They just don't know if they can. Libra energy, two of swords. A decision needing to be made, only it hasn't been made yet. Either because they don't have enough information to make the decision, or there's something they can't see, hence that blindfold, or there's something that they don't want to look at, and that's preventing them from making the decision. I think they just aren't sure if you'll accept them back or not, if the, if they can heal this with you or not, if they're going to get a chance to rebirth this connection with you, but that's what they want to do. They're looking for an opportunity to do that, and it looks to me like you're waiting on that to occur. It's just like they have to get through their internal conflict, and once they do that, once they find the strength to make it through that internal conflict, they're they're drained feeling they're they're draining me here i think that's the wall that's in the way of this advancing is their internal conflict them getting out of their head here getting their focus in the right spot so that they can move forward here getting rid of that internal conflict and quit focusing on the tower and the thing that they don't want they've got to learn how to leave that in the past where it belongs and focus on what they do want which is this love connection here, this love connection that's in the background here, not really being the full brunt of the focus. But to clarify what it is that they want to fight for here, got the Four of Wands, 
the Fool, and the Queen of Cups. Four of Wands is Aries energy. This is, fours are stability. This is stability of the home life, stability of the family life, stability of the connection between the two of you. Right in the center of the mutual energy is that Queen of Pentacles. Very stable, grounded, abundant, the center of the home life. That's what they're wanting to fight for. They're having the hope that they can heal this with you. And they want to fight for the connection. Very first card in your energy, Saggy, Three of Wands. Now we're up to the Four of Wands. The next progression in the suit. We're making progress here. Going from the Three, where we're at the beginning stages of manifesting something and just waiting on it to show up. The Four of Wands is it has showed up. It's materialized in the physical reality. It's been manifested your person is i think that's where they're at right now they're just now getting to the stage where they're willing to fight for the stability of this connection in the home life and the family life and the opportunity here i think they're just now getting past yeah and they they're just now getting past their internal conflict on it getting past this indecision about the opportunity now they're at the spot where they're ready to birth something new with you They've recognized, though, that they need to move this slowly, not make a big mistake here, not try to push too hard because there's been hurt. There's been pain. There's been some bullshit, and they, they understand that, but they're not happy without you. They're not happy with the three cups that they have, and they keep daydreaming about your cup, about either the connection between you and whether or not this love offer will be accepted or rejected by you they're contemplating making the love offer to you and they just haven't yet maybe because they they're still afraid they're going to be rejected they're still internally conflicted because of the tower because they got found out for what they did hey look they're not happy with the three cups they have very next card down is the three of cups reconciliation it's like being reunited and celebrating. She's taking the two separate cups of love and blending them back together into one cup. Right under that, the sun, the happiest card in the deck. Leo energy, happiness, joy, abundance, bliss, harmony. That's what they're wanting to fight for, this with you. Next we have the fool. This is about taking the blind leap of faith on something. It's about not needing to know what all the steps are from beginning to end before they take the first step in your direction. Not needing to know What's the final outcome going to be before they take the first step? This is about just having the blind faith to say, you know what, fuck it. I'm jumping off the cliff and I'm going to figure out how to grow wings on the way down. I'm going to figure out how to work this as I move along. And the reason for that is because the Queen of Cups, this is all the love and emotions that they have for you. They want to give their love and emotions to you. And they want to make this situation right. And it looks to me like that's what you're waiting on. You're waiting on divine timing. You're waiting on this to happen. You're waiting on the right, fair, just thing to happen so that what's supposed to happen can actually happen between the two of you. Now, if you still have questions that you want answered about this situation or your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Sagittarius love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.